Hello fellow Unreal Engine games developers. Today in our continuing desert driving game series I'm going to show you how to implement nighttime driving. So we'll have random sunsets throughout the game and the players will have to navigate using just the power of their headlights. Let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to do is play around with our sun rotation to get the nighttime effect we want. So if you go to your lighting folder in the desert map, choose the directional light. And currently we're only really interested in this Y value. We've got it to minus 10, which is low in the sky. And we want to reduce it to the horizon or below the horizon for our nighttime view. So let's start off by changing that to zero to see what it looks like. And you can see that we end up with the dunes barely visible in nighttime. And that's probably where we want to end up. So we want to go from minus 10 to zero for night mode and then back to minus 10 for daytime driving. So let's uh, start to implement that in a blueprint. So go to the player controller and we'll just put it on a key for now. And then later on in this episode, we'll uh, get it to happen randomly throughout the game. So if you go to the sandstorm section, because we're going to do something very similar to this with a timeline for the sun setting and rising. So just below that, put in an input key, and I'm going to use key N for now, for night, just to test this out. And if that key is pressed, we'll flip flop between sunset and sunrise and what we'll now do is we'll copy this timeline if you remember this timeline is a one second timeline that goes from zero to one so i want my sunset to last about one second as well so we'll duplicate this so select it Control w and just double click we'll change the parameter here from fog density rename it to sun rotation And compile and actually let's just rename this as well to sunset okay so first time we press n we want to play the sunset and then we want to press it again we want to reverse it for sunrise okay so now we need to apply this sun rotation to the sun itself but we don't have a reference to that directional light yet so we need to do that when we spawn the player controller so if you go just up slightly we did a similar thing here when we were getting the exponential height fog for our sandstorm. This is the end of the begin play section. So we want to get actor of class and we want to get our directional light. We should only have one in the scene, our sun. And then, actually I don't want to get all actors of class. Just get actor of class, singular. Directional light, and then promote this to a variable, and we will call that variable sun. Okay, so now we have the sun reference, we can now apply our rotation. So drag this into the scene with control, type set rotation, and we want set world rotation. It will make sure it's got the light component, which is fine. And we want to split the X, Y and Z components because we only want to change the Y component. So do split here and we need to just find what our X and Z values are to uh, plug those in. So go back to the map, go to your directional light and just check the X values and Z values. So it's zero for X, two, nine, five for Z. So come back to the player controller, plug in zero for X, 295 for Z. And now we want to change this Y value. We don't want to change it directly uh, because we don't want the Y to go from zero to one. So we need to put a lerp in between. Lerp float. And you disconnect this 
temporarily we actually want the rotation to be the alpha and we want to lerp from if you remember minus 10 which is where our sun started to zero when the sun has set and then we can plug that into the y value okay and now connect that to the update on the timeline so what's going to happen now is first time we press n we'll go from minus 10 to zero on the y-axis sun will be rotated and when we press it again we'll go back and that'll be our sunrise so let's test that out compile going to play mode actually just let me check let's do it for a single player at the moment there's my sun if i press n it goes to night time and if i press n again the sun rises again um, it could go out slightly darker actually because I can still see the vehicle and I want to put um, some headlights on in a minute so let's make it a bit darker. So instead of going to zero let's go down to one just below the horizon and try that out. The sun, press N. Yeah that's a bit darker now so more, more nighttime um, feeling and go back to sun view all right so that's a that's a good start so we can now add some headlights to the vehicle and there are two ways we can achieve this first of all the material actually has some emissive color on it you might have noticed when we did the car textures so we can we can apply that and we can also put some spotlights on the front as well although that does come with a bit of a performance hit so you might want to consider whether you do that or not so let's uh, come out of the game and let's start to put in some logic for doing headlights. So we'll do this on the pickup truck. So go back to your map, go to vehicle variety pack, uh, vehicle variety pack blueprints, pickup, and open your BP pickup. And what we're going to do, in fact, what I'll, I'll show you what we're going to change. If you go to the viewport and select the mesh for the pickup truck, this material pickup body that we were playing with uh, in last week's episode, if you go into it and open it up, it's got this emissive intensity here that's tied into the emissive color. And the texture that it uses switches on headlights and taillights. So this is pretty useful for us. Let's just rename the parameter though. So at the moment, the parameter is zero, so it's not on. So if we change this parameter to one, it will have all of these headlights and taillights as emissive colors. Let's just rename this so something more memorable. So headlights and make sure you save and apply so that we uh, those changes are applied there. We can shut that down now and then go back to the event graph in your BP pickup and we'll create a new function. Sorry, a new event, custom event and we'll call this server switch headlights and this is going to run on the server so when we switch the headlights on we want to switch them on on the server and then replicate them to all the copies uh, client copies that are there so we need another event we'll call this mc for multicast switch headlights sorry custom event first add custom event and then call it mc switch headlights and this is going to be a multicast event i don't use multicast events often because if you remember we've been worried about whether the receiving uh, client or receiving copy exists but we know that this is in the middle of the game so that uh, we can request the vehicle to switch its headlights on with full knowledge that it exists so this is fine so now our server switch headlights can call the multicast switch headlights so it requests all of the copies to switch the headlights and we've got the material instance for the car body we we got that when we were doing the car changes so drag that in and set parameter and this is going to be a scalar parameter value 
the parameter name that we just changed was headlights. And now we want to set it for to one if we're switching the headlights on and zero if we're switching the headlights off. So we need a Boolean on this function. We'll call it headlight switch. And actually we can drag this directly to the value because um, a Boolean of false correlates to zero, which is what we want in there, and headlight switch of true corresponds to one. So that's fine. We don't need to do any branch. We can just do a direct connection. So that will um, switch it on or off. And the headlight switch on the server function, we now need to drag over so that it's on the server switch headlights function as a parameter as well. Okay, that looks good. And then we just need to decide when we switch these headlights on and off. So go back to the player controller. And what we want to do is after we've done our sunset, uh, we want to switch them on. And after we've done our sunrise, we want to switch them off. So uh, either case, we want to do it when it finishes the timeline. And what we want to do is get the player pawn or index zero, which is my player, and cast to BP pickup. And we'll connect that to the finished event of the timeline. And now we can do server switch headlights. And the last thing we need to do is tell it whether we want to switch it on or off. And at the moment with this flip-flop, we're just going to do it. If it's A, we're switching it. We're setting nighttime. If it's B, we're doing sunrise. So we can just drag this directly here for now. We will change it later on when we get this controlled by the game mode. But this should be a good test uh, to see if the headlights switch on and off. Let's try this. Go into play mode and I'll do N for nighttime, sunsets and the lights, headlights and taillights come on. And when I do sunrise, after the sunrise they go off. So on and off. So that's all working well. Now what we can do, in fact let me just show you something again on this if I go into play mode. Even though these lights are on, they're not actually casting any light on the surrounding scene because uh, this is um, Unreal Engine 4. In Unreal Engine 5, you've got Lumen and it might cast a little bit of uh, light around, but it doesn't do it in Unreal Engine 4. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually put a couple of spotlights on the uh, headlights so they actually cast some light. So we can do this in the BP pickup. Go to our viewport and what we'll do is we'll add a couple of spotlights and position them sort of here and here so that they cast some light in front. Now, be aware that these will be movable lights and they will be a bit of a performance hit. When, I, when I've been doing some testing, I've been running this on a 10 year old PC with a GTX 680 and getting about 40 frames per second. When I added these two spotlights, it went down probably about five or six frames per second. So it did have a noticeable impact. So you might want to consider whether it's an option for your game or not. Anyway, let's put it in and you can then decide whether to keep it or not. So do add component and we want to do a spotlight. And let's call that headlight. And then just drag it into place. Something like that. Let's uh, move it around as well. So you just have to play around a little bit until you get it where you want it. And then let's duplicate it. So Control W and just move it across to 
to the other the other um, headlight. Okay, let's leave them on for now just so we can see what it looks like in the scene before we actually switch them on or off. So I think they'll be activated by default. Um, if you look in here somewhere, there's activation. actually it's just visible not activation so at the moment they're visible <coughs> excuse me uh, so let's just see what they look like in the scene if we go into play mode you can see they're on um, if I go into night mode that's actually pretty good so it'll certainly do for now you can always move them around later on so now what we want to do is have them off at the start of the game and then switch them on or off when we toggle the headlights. So let's come out of here. Um, also make sure they, they should default to movable so that uh, the light will be cast in the right place as the vehicle moves around. So, so we've got a headlight and headlight one. Let's select them both and turn off the visible flag. Compile. And go back to our event graph and now in our switch headlights function multi cast switch headlights function we want to make those visible uh, and invisible depending on the headlight switch so let's drag in our two headlights do headlight one first of all Set visibility and it's got a boolean here so we can take our boolean and put that in and the same uh, control W same for the other headlight plug the headlight switch in and again you probably want to just tidy up these cables but I'll leave you to do that yourself okay so now that should switch on the headlight to headlights when we go into night mode and then switch them off when we come out of night mode let's do a test go into play okay so currently no lights on the vehicle let's go into night mode yeah so we now have the emissive light and the headlights and when we go back, they all switch off. We ought to do a quick multiplayer test here as well, because we've been using this multicast to make sure that it's uh, the headlight switches are sent to all the vehicles, but we haven't actually tested it out yet. So let's just try it with two. And actually this won't uh, work. Well, no, it will work, but uh, I'll show you the, the problem we've got. So let's, um, Let's do N here. So it's only applying the night mode on that particular um, client because we haven't, we're not controlling it from the game mode yet. But let's do it there and let's also do it on the server. And let's just drive to the other vehicle. See if the change will apply. Yeah, I can see, yeah, it all looks good. You can see that both vehicles have both sets of lights switched on on both vehicles so the multicast is working correctly so we can we can move to the last uh, part of this tutorial which is to have this night mode switched on and off randomly by the game mode a bit like the way we did the sandstorm we had we had it happen randomly and that way it'll be synchronized between all of the different players so let's go to the game mode so come to your map Go to your world settings, game mode. We want to find pick up game mode. And if you find your section to do with the sandstorm, we're going to do something very similar here. We're going to have a timer and we're going to have a flag which checks whether it's running or it's going to happen randomly throughout the game and tell the clients to toggle the, uh, the, the feature. So actually the first thing we want to do is we want to change our player controller uh, from an input to a an event. So go back to your player controller and now what we want to do is remove these first two nodes 
And very similar to up here, we want to do a client toggle night mode and a branch, depending on whether it's on or off. So custom event. It will be client toggle night mode runs on the owning client and then we'll do a branch drag this boolean back here and we will call this night mode switch so if if the game mode is telling the client to switch on the night mode then we'll play the sunset and do all the headlight stuff and if it's telling it to switch off the night mode we will reverse it so that's pretty straightforward and you see it's very similar to what we did up here for the sandstorm okay so that's pretty much everything done on the player controller let's go back to the game mode now and copy this whole sandstorm section so let's drag around the whole comment box control w actually control z that's because it's over overlapping a bit with the all right so actually just go along here to select everything do control c and then go into plenty of empty space and do control v that's better and let's just put it above there and let's call this night mode. The first thing we want to do is have an event which we will call initialize night mode. And we will have this happening, the sandstorm we had happening potentially every 25 seconds. Let's do this a slight different time, so every 30 seconds. And then we will call this event here toggle night mode. And rather than happen one in every two times, I want this happen quite rarely. Um, however, we want to test this out now. So just let's make this every five seconds and we'll make the random between zero and zero. So it happens every time. We'll change that in a minute. OK, and we need to call this initialize night mode at the start of the game so that it starts doing the timer. So if you go to the uh, section here, this is the event begin play. We've initialized in the sandstorm and we'll now do initialize night mode as well so that it will start the timer. OK, All right, let's go back to the night mode. And now we're going to replace some of the variables here so instead of doing we're checking if the game's running um, uh, if it is then we're going to randomize it and then we're going to see if, it, if the well, at the moment it's saying is sandstorm on but we need a is night mode on so our is sandstorm on we need to copy and we'll call this boolean is night mode on and then we just get rid of a couple of, you shouldn't have these, these are variables that I added later on. Okay, so now we've got, uh, is night mode on? And instead of testing this, is sandstorm on? We will check whether the night mode is on. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's not, it's gonna switch it on. So we need to do, same logic here and we want to so we're inverting the boolean and then setting it so we need to change the set to is set is night mode on so we're just changing all the instances of sand uh, is night is sandstorm onto is night mode on now do we need to Set a density. No, we don't. It's just a switch, so we can get rid of this logic here. And 
actually we if we're going to do this we're going to go to the tell the um clients to toggle the sandstorm whether it's true or false so actually we don't need this anymore either so this simplifies it we're just checking this game running and if we're randomly saying to toggle it we're setting that on so we're going through each of the players and getting them to toggle the night mode so get rid of this and this and do client toggle night mode and here is our switch it's from the not because remember if night mode was off we're switching it on and setting it and then if it was on we're switching it off and that I think should be everything I'm sure we've made some mistakes oh yes we haven't connected the player controller so the array element which is the player controller we need to drag to the function here as well okay so that looks as though it's correct so um, let's give this a go so go into play mode we've got two players and nothing's going to happen while we're not playing the game so <clears throat> go to the server and let's go into play mode by pressing B for begin and you can see that straight away goes into night mode sandstorm as well so I noticed one problem so even though it's going from night to day and then we've got sandstorms as well you probably notice that the headlights aren't switching on or off and that's because I didn't connect the new boolean switch to our headlight input so I know why this is happening so let's come out of here and fix that so if you go back to the player controller client toggle night mode you can see that our switch headlights has the headlight switch but we haven't connected it to anything we need to connect to this new night mode switch so that will now switch the headlights on or off and I think that was the only problem so if we go back into play go back to the server begin the game goes in night mode and now the lights come on that's perfect and lights go off when it comes back to sunset five seconds later and night mode again lights on sunrise lights off so that's all working so the final thing we need to do is just to change those timings because at the moment we're doing it every five seconds so you don't want that in your game so it's it's up to you what you set this to but go to your game mode go to your uh, set timer by event and decide how often you want to check so as I said I have it happening every 30 seconds and then how often then you've got this randomization how often do you want it to happen um, so at the moment it's happening every time 30 seconds I actually want this to happen one every 10 times so I'm going to put nine here so it will happen one in one in ten times uh, so it's only going to happen every sort of four or five minutes it's going to be a fairly rare event and uh, that's the end of today's tutorial I uh, hope you find it interesting and informative uh, and stick around for the next one so I'll see you then bye for now